thought I'd do a short video and just explain in extremely simplified terms um, what PIDs are, how they relate to each other. Um, it's really not as uh, difficult as a lot of people think it is. The individual terms are not super complicated in how they work and just a little bit of understanding can make tuning decisions on your quad much, much easier to make. For our flight performance, really the two most important terms are P and D. P term is kind of the main important driving term. So if we say have our stick centered, we're looking at zero degrees a second, and we want to do a snap roll. So we very quickly ramp up to 600 degrees a second and then hold the stick there. If we look at what just the P term will do, and say our red line here is what P term um, gives us, the P term looks at how far away we are from the destination. Here, the P term sees the destination is getting further away, and it's going to start accelerating towards it. And as we come here, the destination is really far away. So the p-term is going to say, like, hey, we need to get moving this direction. We're really far away. And it's going to keep going. And here we're getting closer. So the p-term is going to say, hey, we're only a little far away. We don't need to accelerate quite as much. So it's going to accelerate less. And then when we're right up here, it's going to say, hey, we're pretty close. We only need to move a tiny, tiny amount over there. But because we're moving a physical thing, we have momentum and it's going to keep moving even though the p-term is not trying to accelerate us anymore. We have all of this motion that we've built up uh, from earlier and so we're going to actually blow right past the destination because p-term doesn't know to slam the brakes and, and try and slow us down the other way. And it's going to sit here and say, hey, we need to go this way. We're, we're past the destination again. But the p-term, of course, doesn't work instantly, and so it's going to take some time, and we're going to cancel our, all of our momentum out, and then it's going to say, hey, we need to go that way again, and so on and so forth. And it's going to give you this oscillating thing when you hear p-term oscillations. This is the sort of effect that you get. It takes time to hit our final destination, but p-term doesn't know to slow down, and so it overshoots and compensates by trying to go the opposite direction, and it does not settle on. So you see we've been holding the stick for a long time and the quad is just bouncing back and forth, and this happens very, very quickly. If your p-gains are, are really, really high, you may have a lot of oscillation. If your p-term is too low, it'll see that it's trying to do but if your term is very low, then you're only allowing it to say, we need to move a little bit in this direction. And so it's only going to push a tiny, tiny amount all through here. And we'll slow down because we are losing our momentum. And as we get closer, the P term is also getting smaller. And so you can see what we end up getting is we don't necessarily overshoot, but it takes us forever to hit our target. And this leads to very sloppy control and loss of stabilization when things uh, interfere with the quad. It doesn't, isn't, can't move quick enough to react. So that's the, the problem with P-term. If you have too little of it, you have very poor control and uh, it doesn't react very quickly. And if you have too much of it, you get nice and sharp, nice and sharp control, but you get massive overshoots. The D term helps us compensate for this. What the D term does is it kind of looks at how quickly we are approaching our target. So when we're down here, the P term is cranking it up and saying, we need to go up here. And say we're at this point, the P term is saying, hey, we need to accelerate just a little bit here. But the D term can say, hey, we're approaching our target really, really close. We need to start slowing down. So it's going to apply an, a, a braking force 
to the total term and what happens is the p and the d get added together that becomes you add all the terms together that becomes the PID sum that actually drives the motors but so we see we have a, a little bit of a p term here as we're getting close it, it's we're not too far away so the p term uh, says that we only need to accelerate a little bit because we're, we're not too far um, the d term sees hey we're approaching very quickly we need to start slowing down and what this gives us a, a final number if you add say a small number and a big number we or a um, you know a, a small positive and a big negative you see it's going to give us a mostly negative number so it's actually going to start slowing uh, the the motors down so we don't try and, and overshoot so we start slowing down and the d term says okay we're approaching a little slower we need less reverse force and the p term is still blindly doing its thing and it's well we're pretty close so we only need a tiny tiny amount of drive and it'll really control our overshoot and when we're on the opposite side we've over only overshot a little bit and d term again starts to compensate and say hey we're approaching pretty slowly we can start slowing down and it really damps out that overshoot so you hit your target if you have your d term term tuned well it can stop um, slow you down enough so that you actually hit your target without a lot of overshoots. Now something that you'll hear a lot is how D-term reinforces noise. We need D-term to slow us down so we don't overshoot our target and to, to, to damp down oscillations so that rather than having a large oscillation the D-term can slow it down and maybe it'll only bounce once or twice very a uh, very small amount before it stabilizes on a, a rapid change um, but if you imagine say we're looking at a gyro trace and we're basically sitting still and we have a little tick of noise that just goes away and comes back if we imagine we're the D term, the P term, all all the while looking at, at this thing, saying, "Yeah, we're 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 dead on. We don't need to do anything. We're dead on. We don't need to do anything all through here." We get a little bit of noise. The D term says, "Oh, uh, or P term says, oh well, we're a little bit off. We need to move a little bit there, and then oh, we need to do nothing." So it really doesn't care about just a, a little um, blip in the the uh, trace, but. If we consider what the, the D term sees, it also sees, well, we're there, we don't need to do anything. And the same at each of these locations. But when we get our blip of noise, all of a sudden it says we are rapidly moving away from our target. So the D term says, hey, we're getting away really quick. We need to start moving the opposite direction to 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 slow down this uh, this movement away from our target. And then on the next bit there, it'll do nothing. But there'll be some delay, this doesn't happen instantly. And so this little bit of noise then becomes a motor command that later down the line can be another little blip. And this has the same thing where you know, P term doesn't really care a lot necessarily, and oh, we're getting kind of far away, we need to move. Um, but the D term is once again seeing, hey, we're moving away from our target really quickly. We need to start moving this way. We need to start moving this way. And again, we've got a bit of a delay before these motor commands start coming down, and we can get where one little blip of noise can cause the D term to get overexcited and cause large motor movements that then cause other motion and uh, ends up uh, giving a really uh, jittery you see the the where your motors are jumping around and the D term is is up and down all the time so that's why it's really important to, to control noise because a little bit of noise in your gyro trace say you've got an unbalanced prop or something like that the D term is going to see all of these as you know differences in speed it's we're going to be accelerating and and breaking towards our our target this whole time and it's going to really overreact to that so that's where filtering helps a lot um, 
and uh, trying doing physical things to mitigate noise, uh, using soft pads on the motor, soft mounting your FC, um, O-rings are, are really commonly used, that sort of thing. Because we need to use the D-term to compensate for the P-term. So if we turn, if we have a lot of noise and we turn the D-term the D down, then the P-term is a lot more free to oscillate and overshoot. And we can't use as strong of a P-term because we don't have the D-term reining it back in. The final term is the I-term. The I-term happens over a long period of time, and what happens is if you have your, your P-term, say you're, you're very close to your target, the P-term is just a tiny, tiny amount of strength, and it's not necessarily enough to push us to exactly our final target number. So what the I term does is it looks over this long period of time and says, hey, we're not actually quite at the destination yet, and it helps apply an additional force. So if we are hitting near our target, our P term is saying, yeah, we're basically there. We don't really need to move. And the I term can say, no, we're not quite there yet. We need to start pushing up. But the I term is very weak so it only pushes us a little bit. And then when we check again, we're still getting basically nothing out of our P term. But the I term says, no, we're still not there yet. We need to go a little further. And that can push you onto your final target. So hopefully that helps demystify a little bit what the P terms are and how they interact with each other. You can see there's really only the two main ones uh, that matter. We want to control noise so we can use a lot of D term, so we can use a strong P term, so that any time that we ask it to go a different direction, we get a very strong, quick response, and that we don't have a, a slow, laggy control loop. Now, in modern flight controllers, you don't get a very pure implementation of this. Uh, there's a lot of filtering that happens at, at many different stages, and there are uh, caps on certain terms. I term can cap out and uh, gets reset at certain in certain situations and stuff like that. But this just gives a general overview of how the system works. Uh, look forward soon. Um, I'll I'll do something. I want to take a look at a black box log and uh, show how this applies when you're looking at a black box log. What those traces should actually look like. What we're trying to to accomplish because. You know, simple uh, lines are, are all well and good, but of course it's a little messier once we actually uh, look at the thing on an actual quad. Uh, so look forward to that coming up soon.